Decision, uh, victory tonight. Yeah. yeah, very scared the shit out of me. Can I say that? Because sure. this is okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ariel, what's, what's up, man? What's up? How are you? Congrats. How did you assess your performance tonight? Um, you know, it's it's been a long time, so it's uh, I was just as glad to get back in there, and uh, I felt sharp. I felt I dominated him everywhere. I think maybe that one judge that gave him the two rounds just, I, I mean, I don't even feel like he hit me. He threw a couple of kicks that didn't do anything. Um, I pretty much evaded everything else he threw. And uh, the only thing he really got was, I think, one takedown in the first. But I mean, I got right back up. I don't even know if you want to really call that a takedown. Uh, and then uh, his uh, time that he had me back against the cage, um, uh, he didn't land anything there. In fact, I felt like I landed the better shots there. But uh, yeah, overall, I think I dominated the fight. So for them to call a split, you know, had me worried, especially because last night my boy Boston Salmon got ripped off in RFA. And uh, I didn't think that was a split decision. And then the split decision call came and ended up getting ripped. So, yeah. How did you feel in there just with the long layoff? I mean, was it instant, uh, any kind of uh, cage rust for you going back in with the layoff? No, no, uh, no type of ca no, no cage rust for me. In fact, I didn't feel it. Uh, i had been kind of wondering about that. Like, it doesn't. I don't know, I don't feel any type of like weird anxiety, like, oh, I haven't fought in a while leading up to the fight. So I would wondered, like, hey, I wonder if fight night rolls around, like how I'm going to feel. And uh, as the days kept progressing, um, fight week, check-in, uh, media, whatever, um, weigh-ins, like, I just, it felt like another day to me. So getting in there, you know, while we warmed up, we got a really good warm-up in, uh, mm -hmm. me, Ray, and Eric. And uh, I felt I felt pumped up, ready to get in there. and. Uh, I felt really good in there, you know, I uh, felt strong, I felt sharp, I felt I could see everything that he was throwing, and uh, yeah, I felt good. felt good to be back in there. Any particular reason why you don't have the American kit? Um, no, nah, I just think that the black and silver is way more dope. <laughs> 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 yeah. Nothing against America, I mean, I, fuck, I love my country. I wanted, we've been, the Hawaii boys have been pushing to get, you know, like the Hawaiian flag on there. And, uh, you know, like be able to rock something more specific to Hawaii, because although Hawaii is part of America, you know how, I mean, you have a lot of, you know, a lot of people from Hawaii. So, you know how it is. We're very prideful of Hawaii and we want to represent that. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's nothing against my country. I love my country, but uh, I just think the black and silver, you know, like look at how clean that looks. Black and silver. That's that's dope. What they say about getting you the Hawaii kit? They not no, I, the most that we can do is uh, carry a Hawaiian flag into the ring. So next time, though, because at first they said we, you know, like they had to, they didn't consider that um, a country flag. So they'll allow American flag, Brazilian flag, whatever it is, Australia, France. But because Hawaii isn't a country, at first they said that they weren't like allowing anybody to do state flags. But the Hawaiian flag got cleared. So from here on, moving forward, the Hawaii boys can carry the Hawaiian flag in. Oh, okay. Yeah. You can't carry a state flag? No. They said Hawaii is the only state that got approved. That's my sorry. Speaking of Hawaii. That's what they said. You guys are on a, an amazing roll between Max and Courtney and Yancey tonight and you. I don't recall the Hawaiian fighters in general. Maybe there's more now than there's ever been in the UFC on this kind of a roll. Do you feel like this is going to help get the card finally there? Get I, the event finally there? It, it has to. I mean, they do cards in like all stretches of the world and in little, you know, they go to Brazil and do it in little, I don't know, look like gymnasiums. I've seen a few of them in. So, you know, we got a Blaisdell Arena in Hawaii. They got the Stan Sheriff. They've done K1 events there. I've heard um, <clears throat> they wanted to do it at a law stadium, but a law stadium is uh, not covered. Right. So there was a problem. But uh, they need to get it there, you know. I don't know what the holdup is. I think it has something to do with the tax and the cost and all this. But hopefully this new company that uh, bought the UFC can figure that out. Because like you said, you know, there's a wave of Hawaii fighters right now. And it's going to keep going. There's a bunch of young up-and-comers from Hawaii that are doing big things. And they, too, will shortly be in the UFC. Um, BJ's still here making his way back. And, you know, BJ has long been the king of uh, of uh, uh, Hawaii MMA. So uh, with him leading the way, I, and especially with Max, you know, who deserves a title shot. And uh, if Connor's gonna fight whoever, Alvarez or Diaz again, 
then uh, I think Max definitely needs to get that Aldo fight. And if that does happen, why not UFC Hawaii? And uh, you were in that elevator yesterday, right? Yeah. Uh, first off, are you surprised that Dalloway pulled out? Um, no, I, I, I'm, you know, um, one part of me is kind of surprised, um, but no, because uh, myself personally, I wouldn't go as far to say my back hurts, but uh, my lower back has been tight after. Uh, I mean, since it's happened, um, it just, it's not a pain. It's more so like, like I've been telling everybody, the best way to explain it is if you jump off of something really high and you just land on a hard surface, that, that uh, thud that you feel, and then your back kind of feels just tight. And it, like, it constantly feels like I got to stretch it. So like, even in warm-ups tonight, I was trying to stretch it more. Even now, it, I just feel like I got to, it just feels tight. Like I got to keep stretching it. There's no pain. There's no loss of mobility. So, uh, you know, you know, I, I can't speak for anybody. Everybody has to speak for himself. So maybe CB, you know, I, he said his back are locked up. I, I can see that happening. So Did anyone, sorry, at the hotel say anything to you guys? Because th this just sounds crazy that you I guys don't are this injured. Dude, it, they, the hotel themselves, they didn't even address it at all. It, like They didn't even say, like, hey, guys, hang around. Please fill out this incident report. They're like, okay, whatever. The UFC... Um, uh whatever you want to call them i don't know who staff. it was yeah their staff and they called us personally and i was like hey you guys are in the elevator please come back we need you guys to fill out these uh statements these uh witness statements whatever incident reports kind of yeah. and uh everybody was in the elevator so with my team was myself ray Sefo, and eric nixick we were all in there uh yancey was in there maki cb verdum and uriah so imagine if we fell from higher than the second floor. We could have sustained major injuries and this card might not even happen tonight. Yeah, so how would you describe the, the, the impact? Like, was it like a jolt? Were you, were you scared? Uh, nah, nah, it wasn't scary. It was uh, it, the scary thing. This is the scariest part about it. So we're all in there. We're all playing around. We majority of us loaded in the lobby. We move up to the second floor and then uh, Eric and Maki get in. And when they're getting in, you know, Verdum, he, he's like a clown guy. Like, he likes to play around. And we all were. But uh, he's like shoving Maki. Like, no, 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 too heavy. But as he's shoving Maki, he doesn't realize we're starting to drop. And Eric literally grabs Maki like, oh, oh. And Maki's back is like here, like getting pushed out, you know, because Verdum was just playing with him. And uh, that's when the elevator started to drop. The doors were still open. We see, like, the concrete going. And I'm like, oh, we're dropping. And then uh, it wasn't until we hit the bottom yeah. and it, it wasn't real crazy but uh we definitely felt it like boom so as maki pulled in he was pulled into the elevator yeah yeah i'm not trying to make it sound all crazy uh something definitely could have happened he could have maybe lost his life or a limb it wasn't like real crazy like he was standing in the doorway but verdum did push him he was on his heels and eric pulled him back in um as we were dropping but that was a crazy thing the doors didn't even close and uh, if you've been in elevators before, usually they'll buzz if, if you hit that weight limit. They'll go bzzz, and then means get off. You know, it's too heavy. Nothing. We got in. We, in fact, we pressed the button to go up. We started going up. The doors didn't even close. It went yink, and then. Have you taken the stairs since? Nah, I took the elevator that works. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you feel uh, your back? Did, nah, at the, at, the fight? Did you know nah, 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 nah. At, at the time, like I said, it's more like more, and that's when I realized it. Once I sat down, once I was relaxing, then I was like, hey, what is this? My back feels tight. But like, as I'm moving around and, you know, doing stuff, it wasn't an issue. It wasn't an issue in the fight. Yeah. When the uh, elevator hit the bottom, did like everybody kind of fall down or was it for the most part everybody stay on their feet? Um, for the most part, everybody stay on their feet. If you, if you guys seen the videos, you seen how packed we had it. It was like assholes to elbows, you know, like fucking, it, it was tight, so. Even if we were to move, like uh, just the pure mass of everybody in there probably would have held us all up. But uh, yeah, we, we did one of those like, uh, I don't know if you got bumped or something while you're standing in like a bus or something. We just, everybody kind of did one of those. But uh, yeah, it, it wasn't until honestly, when it was happening, it was all fun and games. It was really funny to us. It started getting instantly hot and started fogging up. But uh, Afterwards, when we started like really thinking about what just happened, then like the serious side of it kicked in. Like, wow, we 
Imagine if it dropped from higher. Like, we're on the seventh floor. Imagine if it dropped seven to basement, because it dropped all the way down to the basement. You know, like, we'd be messed up dropping that far. Do you think the hotel maybe would have fed, you know, clothes, lifts, the elevators, because it was an earlier instance? Yeah, they should have. The early way on Friday morning. All, so all, all week, the elevators have been acting up. I don't think anybody got trapped in there prior, um, <laughs> the prior days, I mean. But uh, it definitely had been acting up because pretty much for the whole week, only one elevator was working and they're having issues, issues. And then uh, I didn't know till afterwards, but one of the UFC staff was trapped in there for 45 minutes. Trapped. Yeah. And was it the same elevator that he was trapped in? Yeah. The one that was closest to the lobby desk? Yes, same elevator. And so they so-called fixed it. And then we get in there, drop, boom. And since since it's happened, the, the middle and the first elevator closest to the desk They've been uh, out of commission, but uh, yeah, I mean, they needed to get that stuff fixed. I'm surprised they didn't catch a, a lawsuit, you know? So we'll see. We'll see if that turns into the UFC Hotel of Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you well, hear the Brad that? Tavares Hotel. Yeah, the Brad Tavares. That one of the UFC cut men right before the show got stuck in a different hotel. Oh, yeah, I heard, I heard something like that down uh, the road, huh? Yeah, the, the firefighters had to come get him out. <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> so, the firefighter, the fire uh, department showed up, but uh, it, we we were out already. How long were you stuck in the basement? Uh, I would say roughly 15 minutes. Really? Yeah, but uh, it, it was just it was crazy because as soon as we dropped down there, it instantly got hot. Like just all those big bodies in there. Like, so what was that, the feeling? What was everybody saying while they were waiting? Laughing, every, blaming each other. Yeah, Snapchatting. I was Snapchatting. It, like if, I saved all the videos. I'll probably go post it on my Twitter. But yeah, if you guys got me on Snapchat, go go look at it before the story you know expires. But it's, it's pretty funny actually. You got Verdum blaming Ray. You got me blaming Verdum. Ray was probably the biggest guy in there, wasn't he? Um, Ray and Verdum probably. <laughs> The funniest part to me is that, like, instantly, as soon as we drop, freaking Babalu is, like, looking if he can climb out the top. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Like, you know, like, they, he didn't even give it a chance. As soon as we hit, he's like, eh, can I get out here? And he's like, oh, no, I don't know. I don't think so. I'm surprised nobody crushed your right favorite. Yeah. No, I don't think anybody knew he was in there, actually. <laughs> nah, but your Uriah was hilarious. He, he was like, he was like, I started to feel a prison like in there. He was like, I most closely, and he said this, guys, he told us that he most closely resembles a girl in that elevator. <laughs> what about the smell after when it wasn't quite? Was nah, because it, it was the, it was the TV way in. So, you know, we, it, it was fine. Uh, everybody, everybody that was in that elevator, their their hygiene was was up to par. So it was just the fact that it started getting really hot. I was wearing pants and like a pullover, just like this, a Reebok one, and instantly started sweating. And then uh, you could see there's uh, mirrors in there. They started fogging up, and like even if you look closely at the videos, when when Eric is prying open the gold doors, you can see the fog on the door. So yeah, it got hot in there fast. I was like. I, you can hear it in one of the videos too. I'm like, frick, Wayans is over. I'm supposed to be done sweating. <laughs> Here we are sweating after Wayans.